Catechesis of the Good Shepherd is a Montessori-based religious and spiritual formation experience for the youngest in our midst. This past July, I spent nine days immersed in level, four, level three formation for children ages nine to 12. To learn how to serve these children in the atrium, the sacred space of hospitality, which gives priority to the child's relationship with God. Children in this particular atrium are really passionate about history and discovering their place in community and in the world. They energetically concern themselves with what has come before in history, in cosmic history, in salvation history, as well as what their contribution will be for the kingdom of God. They deeply realize that they are on a journey with God and others, and because of their relationship with God, they desire to contribute to God's kingdom, its inbreaking. Today, as with the child in the atrium, God actively invites us to that journey ever more deeply. The gospel presents us with the second of three predictions which Jesus makes about his coming passion. And it seems as expected to go right over the disciples' heads, or at least it moves them to a bewildered silence. Instead, they begin discussing quietly amongst themselves who among them is the greatest. And while this might seem odd to us after what Jesus just said, in this first century society, concern and conversation about one's place or status is quite normal. As a matter of fact, it's everyday coffee shop. What's pressing for us, however, is to return to what Jesus said to the disciples prior to their reaction. The Son of Man is paradidotai to men, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. Paradidotai, Greek for to be handed over. While often translated as betray, the meaning of to be handed over can be understood, as one scripture scholar notes, as the idea of God's plan of The word is so important during this moment and through the passion itself that it or some form of it is repeated on 14 occasions before the passion actually occurs in this gospel. What might this mean for us today? It crystallizes that God is the agent of the passion, and by extension, reinforces for us that God is intimately involved in salvation, and from the faith perspective, in salvation history. Now, we know this on some level. And do we act like we know it? In our bones, or do we not get it? And sometimes, more often than not, live in bewildered silence. Let us keep in mind that God's plan continues to unfold today. How do we contribute to God's plan unfolding in the here and now? And how do we cooperate with God in breaking the kingdom? The Book of Wisdom and the Letter of James both pointedly remind us of what not to do. Let us not deliver others into the hands of their foes. Let us not torment or put others to the test. Let us not try one another's patience or condemn others. Let us not give in to our jealousy, our envy, and our caustic desires. Let us not quarrel and fight. Rather, let us remember that the harvest of justice is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Let us be docile, rich in sympathy, kindly in our deeds, and sincere instead. How might we do this? Jesus provides a starting point by offering a point of focus for the disciples front and center, the non-person of the first century, the child, the most vulnerable person of this time. Jesus teaches the disciples to receive the child 
his name, to care for the non-person, to provide for the non-person, to shelter the non-person, to protect the non-person. Between this moment and during the unfolding of the Passion, Jesus continues to teach his disciples, preach in my name and invite others to do so. Attend to your pride, seek the kingdom of God, uphold the commandments, listen to those you see as blind for they will lead you. Love God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. Give from your want, not simply from your excess. God's plan continues to unfold today. How do we contribute to God's plan unfolding in the here and now? How do we cooperate with God for the inbreaking of the kingdom? In turn, Jesus provides a starting point by offering us a point of focus today. Front and center the non-person of the 21st century, the homeless, the uninsured, the abused and the dying, the under-resourced, the lonely, the unexpecting and the trusting, the hungry, the thirsty, the weak and the shamed, the people with other ideas, languages, beliefs, and cultures, those who live in and those who live out of fear for a myriad of reasons. Jesus teaches us to receive all of these in his name. Between this moment today and during the unfolding of the next seven Sundays, Jesus continues to teach us. Preach in my name, invite others to do so. Attend to your pride, seek the kingdom of God, uphold the commandments, listen to those you see as blind, for they will lead you. Love God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. Give from your want, not simply from your excess. God's plan continues to unfold today. How do we contribute to God's plan unfolding in here and now? How do we cooperate with God for the inbreaking of the kingdom? Let us be like the child in the level three atrium really passionate about discovering our place in community, in history, and in the world. Let us concern ourselves with what has come before in cosmic history, in salvation history, and what our contribution is to the fullness of the realized kingdom of God. Let us deeply grasp that we are on a journey with God and others, and because of our relationship with God, let us each contribute to the fullness of the realization of God's kingdom through our one precious life in real and substantive ways.